Trigger ISO drill is one of our favorite drills that we do. So the way this drill works, you're gonna have four magazines and you got four pasters. You can run this with five pasters and five magazines also, we'll talk about it in a second. So your first magazine, first paster is gonna be shot single hand for the entire mag, which will mean about 15 rounds. Strong hand, one mag, first paster. Second paster, support hand, one mag on that paster. Third paster, strong hand again for one magazine. And then fourth paster down here is gonna be both hands together and for one entire mag. So where this drill came from, we used to do this drill a lot back at my old unit and it was came up with by a mental performance coach at our unit. So long story short, guys were asking, why do our guy, why are guys not very good at shooting a pistol? Well, <laughs> long story short, he basically said, cause you haven't taught them to get for the bullet to go where the sights are at. And their response was a couple of expletives and absolutely not, of course, we're teaching them that. And he said, no, 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 really, here's why. Right, So we had to learn how to call our shots. So we learned how to manipulate the trigger in a way that makes the bullet go right where the sights are at. But important thing to remember about that, to know what right is, you gotta know what wrong is. So we're actually going to pull rounds in the wrong direction if you mess up, okay? So let's get into it. All right, so understand why we're doing it. So a couple little things on top of that, that we, uh, reasons we do it, and we said call your shot, right? We wanna get to a point over time where you've worked enough, you've been training enough, that when you put your sights on target and you pull the shot, you don't need to see the result. You don't need to see where the round hit. You should be able to accurately predict or tell yourself or anybody around you, the round, I think I pulled that one to the left or to the right, and it's probably over here. That's calling your shot. And it's something that takes kind of years to, to figure out and do. So our guy that came up the drill basically said, why don't we just teach them that sooner? So we're gonna, to know what right is, you gotta know what wrong is, right? And we wanna be able to call our shot. It's kind of the two main purposes of the drill. So looking at it, we know what we're gonna do. We're loaded up, ready to go. We've got our pistol and everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this as we talk about it, right? Because the other important part is, what do we do if we mess up, right? I don't mean mess up, I just mean if we get a shot so that the bullet doesn't go where the sights are at. So I put my sights on target, pull the trigger, and that round goes to the left. A right-handed shooter, really common issue. We just keep pulling rounds to the left. Well, we have to do something to correct that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and load up here. We're gonna start shooting, and we're gonna go over this. So first thing, load up my first magazine. Press check, everything's good. What I'm gonna do is if I shoot normally, just like this, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shoot with that single hand. So I'm gonna switch my stance a little bit. I'm gonna brace that gun. So it doesn't really matter that, you know, my position's perfect, anything else. And we're not really training like, this isn't one of those, well, if my arm gets shot, you know, and it's down, then I'm gonna train to shoot single-handed. No, <laughs> this is not that drill. This is simply a trigger manipulation and how you pull the trigger. Is it getting the bullet to go where your sights are at? So I'm gonna line up, I'm gonna put my sights on target, and I'm gonna put my dot just on the top of that first black paster. I'm gonna line up here. Everything's good, good to go. Put my sights on and stand by. Good. So you notice one of the things I did when I took that shot was we don't advocate pinning the trigger, right? In this drill, if you do it, that's okay. Simple reason being that I wanna get that good feedback and did I do everything right? So if I look at that target, I see up here that I put my dot right on top of that paster and I broke the shot. Did the bullet go where the sights were at? Absolutely, right? For me, that's, it went right there because I put my sight here. But what we usually do in class is I'll put my sights just off the paster somewhere and I'll pull the trigger. Say I put the shot, the, the uh, sights over here and the bullet impacts you know, just below because I got a little offset of my sight. Is that a good shot or a bad shot? So we'll ask the students, so is that a good shot or a bad shot? And they're like, good shot or bad shot or this or that or whatever. It's like, well, how do you know? It's like because it hit the paster, or it's a bad shot because it didn't hit the paster. Well, here's the thing, where were my sights at? Did the bullet go where the sights are at? Okay, cool. Well, if that's where my sights were at, well, cool, right? It's a good shot. But for this, that's a good shot, went right where my sights were at. So let's go back, now let's keep shooting, and let's find out what happens if we pull around. These are gonna be the corrections that you make, and this is what we mean by pulling the round left or right, okay? So I'm gonna get my gun out again. I'm gonna put my sights on target. I'm gonna shoot. And then one of these, I'm just gonna pull the round a little bit to the inside. So just line it up here. Stand by. There we go, right? So 
That was the first shot we took a second ago. That was the second one. Third one, I pulled it just a little bit, right? But went ahead and did one a little bit more drastic. So we see one that shifted off to the left quite a bit. And we see this a lot, low left. I'm not gonna be too worried about the low part right now. I'm really just concerned with that shots off to the left somewhere. So why did my shot go to the left? Well, here's where we get into how we actually pull the trigger. So we know a couple things about how we pull the trigger. One is, if I pull the trigger from this knuckle, my finger's gonna make this big arcing motion, right? And then it's probably gonna pull that round to the left. And I can't remember his name, uh, I think it was Mike Vaught. He did a video for Surefire a few years ago where he like talks about this and he has a Sharpie, right? So basically, what we wanna do is I wanna pull the trigger from this knuckle up here and it's gonna straighten my finger out a lot more versus that big curving arc. So first thing, we pull the trigger from this knuckle, not this one. The second thing is, is my reference points. How am I pulling the trigger and what direction am I pulling the trigger? So if I look at my hand as I'm holding that gun out, I know that I can pull to the left, I can pull straight back, and I can pull to the right. And with a lot of people, they pull the trigger and they're like, pull the trigger straight back. And they say, well, I am. Well, obviously not, because your round's going off to the left, right? Fair enough. So we have to give ourselves reference points. So the first thing I'll tell you is, if I pull the trigger to my thumb, I'm gonna pull over to this angle over here, to the left. If I pull the trigger to my wrist, I pull straight back. And if I pull the trigger kind of out to my elbow, I pull the trigger somewhat to the right. So for me, and for a lot of people too, and I, I'm not really exactly sure why, but I think it is because fulcrum triggers on polymer frame guns. If I just tell you to pull the trigger to your elbow, a lot of times that takes the round, puts it right in the middle, okay? So I know to pull the trigger straight back for me, I have to think about pulling the trigger to my elbow. So I have to give myself that reference point. Now, understanding all that, what do we do to correct this? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull around, I pulled around to the left, now I'm gonna purposely pull around somewhere off to the right. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact, but I'm gonna pull this round somewhere off to the right. And what we're doing is we're basically canceling that, that out in our brain. I'm leaning left, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull one to the right on purpose, and then I'm gonna split the difference, and I should be right back in the middle. So, let's move back a little bit. I know that on that round, I pulled it off to my thumb, so I'm gonna dig my finger deeper into the trigger, and I'm gonna sweep across it so I can cause the sights to move to the right. So, same thing, line up, grip on the gun, I'm gonna frame that out, put my sights on target, dig my finger in just a little bit deeper, now I caused a round to go to the right, okay? Does this look perfect? No, but the value is there. What we care about is are you doing what you need to do and are you feeling the difference in how you pull the trigger? So when we do that, what happens is over time, we can say, I felt this was off so I can make an immediate correction, right? I know that's not a good shot. That's gonna be an improved. So I have one here, I need an improved, so I bracketed too far the opposite way now I'm just gonna split the, put that pasty back up. Now I'm just gonna split the difference and pull to my reference point and sink them back up in the middle. If we don't cancel this one shot out, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna keep leaning that way. So as I put it up here, boom, boom, I might have a good shot, good shot, left, good, left, good, good, left, good, left, going over and over and over. But if I can overcorrect it the opposite way, that's kind of like, was that cross multiplication, kind of cancels each other out in your brain, bilateral transfer or whatever, and then we'll, you know, move on and we're more, much more likely to be able to remember that and pull the trigger straight. So, let's do it again. Things good. There we go. Line it up, put my sights on target. Good. So fired three rounds, had two right here, one just a little bit off to the edge, but not too bad. So again, what we're doing is we're shooting about two and a half, three yards away from our one inch paster, right? This is not a super, you know, long drill. There's no, there's no time here. We're not using a shot time or anything like that. What this drill is doing is it's letting you explore and figure out how your trigger works on how you shoot. So we got that. Let's say we did our one magazine. What would we do after that? Well, then we would go to the left hand. So whatever I did on the right, I wanna mirror that over as close as I can to the left. So one of the real benefits in this drill of shooting with our left hand, again, isn't because I got shot in my right arm and so now I need to learn to shoot with my left. We're not gonna put duct tape all over our hands and all that, it's not it. So what I'm gonna do is with my left, a lot of us don't train shooting with our support hand as much as we do with our you know, strong hand or anything. 
So what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to feel every little thing that's kind of wrong in my grip, because it's different, right? It's like brushing your teeth with your left hand or your, your support hand, right? It just feels weird. So when I go back to my right, I'm gonna notice some of those little deficiencies in there. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line that up and make sure my grip is exactly the same, right? Thumbs up, everything's good, feel that. I'm gonna move it over to the left. I'm gonna switch my stance so it all lines up. Same thing, stand by. Good. So had a couple a little bit high and I'm kind of hugging the left side here because my dot was somewhere over here. But overall, not bad, right? I don't shoot as well with my, my left hand as I do with my right, like a lot of people. So what do we do? We go through the entire mag like that, making any corrections that we need, just like we did over here. Then we're gonna go back the third paster, right? We're gonna go back to that firing hand or that strong hand, and you're probably gonna feel that little, that little uh, differences now, right? So we should see a little bit of improvement here probably, but where we're really gonna see our improvement is on that fourth paster. We really like the fourth paster when we put it all together, because at that point, you see yourself stacking those rounds, everything tightened up more than normally, because you shot with both hands, you feel those differences, and that's gonna build us some confidence as we go through the rest of our day. So I'm gonna shoot a couple here real quick, and then we'll go to both hands. Good. So, same thing, third paster. Oh, got one off to the right, so I'm gonna overcorrect. Got it, correct it off to the left. Now let's split the difference. And we're right back in the middle. Good. So you can see the correction that we made on the target, pulled around a little to the right, corrected it off to the left, and that fourth round was stacked right on the bottom of the paster. So good to go on that. We would finish our magazine that way. Now, all we're gonna do, put it together. So this is the kind of the trick here, not the trick, but something to look out for, is we shot one-handed, nice and easy here, right? Nice and relaxed with each hand. What we wanna avoid is that when you go to both hands, we see this a lot. As Soon as they put both hands on the gun, they start changing their grip, they turn into the tactical turtle and everything else. Stay relaxed when you shoot. That doesn't have a whole lot of benefit to it. So, same thing, I held my gun like this. All I'm gonna do, just adjust my feet, hold the gun and steady it out with my left hand. Stand by. Good and we would shoot our entire mag. So we see this, it's a little bit open, starting to line up a little bit. We get some value out of that, made some corrections and tightened it up. And then the fourth paster is what we really care about. We learned a lot on these three. Now let's put it together on the fourth. So another reason we do this drill, okay? So excuse me, let me go back. You can do this with five mags. You can do it with five pasters, but all we would do is we would go strong, support, strong, we'd add another support one, then we'd go to both hands. Either way is fine. We just use four in classes because it saves a little bit of time and ammo. But other than that, you can do it either way. You can do it as much as you want, really. So why, kind of circling back on that, why do we like this drill? So at our old unit, we would go and we had a course that we did where guys are shooting for a week right on the flat range. Every morning, they would do three score drills. In the afternoon, they'd do one or two. Come in the next day, there's a spreadsheet first to last, right? Top shooter to worst shooter in the class. And if you're the worst shooter in the class, case of beer. If you're the worst shooter and your team was there, your worst shooter on your team, case of beer. Basically everything was a case of beer if you didn't do very good. So, and it better not be IPAs. Those are terrible. I don't know why anybody drinks that crap. Scheinerbach, good beer. So, and Yingling. So, with that said, we want to see, I have no idea what I'm talking about now. All right, uh, oh, that was it. So, we would track these scores, right? And we track all these scores in different classes and for years, right? Everybody that went through. Our guy came up with this and, uh, and uh, the committee started running this drill. And what they saw was about a 40% improvement on those score drills when they did this once in the morning. That's a lot of improvement. That's a lot of bang for your buck. So I don't know about you, but I'll take 40%. When I started doing this drill, everything started to come together. I didn't doubt when I pulled the trigger as much, but it, honestly, it was because of this single drill. You can make it harder, you can push it back, you can do what you need to do, but just remember that it's a learning process. So if your shots aren't tightly, you know, perfectly stacked and all this stuff, that's fine as long as you're getting the value out of the drill. So run the drill, tag us in it, comment what you think down below, let us know how it goes, and uh, 
Cool. Have fun.